The musician singer David Christopher started his music career since very young in the home country Australia and quickly became famous with a sweet and modest acoustic voice. After that, he decided to expand his view and experience by touring to Germany in some years. And in Germany, he first released his solo album titled Apartment in Hamburg. This album was quickly reached the top of the music board. Then, he chose London as his next destination of the music, and he currently tries to develop his music career in London. He is the typical artist representing for the endeavor of foreign artists in conquering the international music market. You're a lifetime in each moment You're a playwright and a poet You're a love song in a romance Hello and you're watching Shane Vietnam on VTC10 NetVet. Today you have seen and reviewed uh, performances from the talented Australian singer-songwriter David Christopher. He has uh, a beautiful, uh, sweet acoustic voice and a huge number of fans in London, Germany and Australia. Now he has kicked off his career in his home country, Australia. However, he has big influences and big success in international markets such as Germany and London. Uh, we want to talk to him today because we shall find out more about his experience that will become valuable lessons for our Vietnamese artists who want to reach further than butter and go across the countries into international markets. Now let's welcome him. Thank you David so much for having us here today. And so David, we know that this is the first time that you come to Vietnam. Uh, how are you feeling right now? It's an amazing city. It's um alive, it's vibrant, I'm just, my senses are overwhelmed, that's kind of why I wanted to come here, I got everything I expected, it's fantastic. So I've only been here 24 hours and I'm already just buzzing with, with the life of the city, it's fantastic. Yeah, um, not so far, I took a, I took a ride today, um, what are those little bicycle yeah. cabs called? I went in one of those for a couple of hours and I went to Ho Tay, Westlake. Um, Hong Kiam Lake. I just had a sort of overview of the city. I, I know that you have just played in uh, Indonesia and other countries in Asia. So after playing in those countries, how do you how do you expect the audience in Vietnam would be like? Well, one of the things that attracted me to playing here um, was that John said that the audience tends to sit down and be very quiet and pay attention, which is something that we don't get a lot in Australia, um, and that. So straight away I said, please let me play, you got to let me play there, because I've got the sort of style of music that really suits that kind of audience. It's very subdued, very laid back, very heartfelt, and to an audience that's wanting to sit there and listen, that, that would be a very good combination, I think. Um, same as in Indonesia, a couple of nights ago, I had a really a fantastic audience that just, I was able to fortunately go out and just do what I do and do it well, and they appreciated that. It doesn't always happen that way back home. So that's just looking around the, the general vibe of the place now, I think that it's going to be okay. Share with us about the, um, the performance and the show that you will uh, showcase today, tonight in Hanoi Social Club. Uh, okay, I, I just brought out an album about two or three months ago, so I'll be largely playing songs from that. I've got one or two covers, but not so well known, just things that I like. Um, I think there's a Doors song in there that uh, not many people know. Yeah, but predominantly my own material. Um, that's why I wanted to come here, and that's kind of the order of the day, I understand for musicians in this venue, so I was very happy to be able to have a, a venue and an opportunity to play a lot of my own stuff to an audience that wants to listen. Now we know that you are an Australian uh, songwriter, singer-songwriter, but however your success has come, has reached to Germany and London as well, so share with us your journey uh, during that time and how did you do that? Um, just well, living there, you know, uh, I lived in Germany for nearly three years. Um, and I had a brother living in London, so it's always good to know someone in other cities where, where you can sort of stay and do a little bit of, um, you know, put some roots down and meet venue owners. I, I first travelled to Hamburg and I stayed there about six weeks with another band and I just made a lot of contacts. That's what I always do. I just make, you know, I gave him my card. I'm always making contacts and I just keep in touch. 
And then I moved there about a year later and I just knew a lot of venue owners and I got to do similar things like this, do a few little sort of TV interviews and stuff like that and, and the opportunities to play my own music were a bit more abundant over there. So yeah, I, I just I just network a lot, I follow up and I just I ask everyone all the time, which is why I'm here. Do you have any difficulties during that journey? Um, it wasn't really any difficulties, it's just like a you know, it takes time, that's all. It doesn't happen overnight, so you've kind of You've just got to get known, you've got to play the best you can play and you've got to talk to a lot of people and soon little things filter outwards and people start to know your name and it works that way. So do you think uh, the barrier in language, because I know that Germany speak a totally different language than uh, English, so is that a barrier that you had to overcome? No, actually in Germany they're very um, oriented towards the more, the charts in Germany are very oriented to more, you know, They're a mixed bag. There are German entries in the chart, but there are a lot of English, American, Scandinavian. It's from all over the world. So I was still just largely playing English-speaking songs. Um, I just started de developing my set, including my own stuff, based around what I was being asked to play. There are currently many Vietnamese artists who have desired to develop their music to the world and reach the certain success. The singer Mi Tham, who had the honor to receive two Best Asian Artists Award in 2012, this is the big and honor Korean award and a new one starting from 1990 to record the achievements of Korean and other Asian artists. She was also selected as the Best Foreign Artist in Southeast Asia in 2013 at the MTV EMA 2013 in Netherlands. She was also nominated as the best singer in the world of the World Music Award 2013. The singer Tu Ming, to follow the success of Meetem in 2012, she received the Best Asian Artist Award Marmara 2013. It's a great honor to receive the MAMA Award for the best Asian artist in Vietnam. Thank you, thank you so much for your support and loving my music. The single Tangbu who made impressions by deal with famous Asian singer Tata Jiang and all of them are representing for the face of the music in Vietnam which have the influence internationally. So now coming back to the topic of our show today, which is um, giving out your story as a valuable lessons and experience for our um, Vietnamese artists who want to reach across border into international audience. I know that in Vietnam nowadays there are um, a lot of Vietnamese artists who has exposed their music internationally. However, they seem to be, you know, seem to be judged. Um, mostly by the international critics rather than international audience. So how do you think about that statement? I think if you just have a quality product, i.e. Your, your music, your image, the, the way you present yourself and what you do, it, whether it takes a, a short time or a long time, it'll always shine through. I, I've always found sometimes things haven't worked for me, but when they have worked, they've worked spectacularly well because I've connected with the right people. So eventually things do work out, critics or audience aside. You will always break through when you're just doing what you're doing well, honestly, from your heart. Um, you know, if you do it the other way around, when you're trying to seek, whether it's your own country or other countries, trying to fit into a, an image or a mold that may not be you, I don't think it'll really work. It might seem to work, it might appear to work, but ultimately it doesn't. So I found for me, um, it's not such a difficult thing playing in other countries. It's just a matter of, you know, I've got enough of a product that seems to resonate with enough people that they go, they'd like me to play at their venues or people are happy to watch me play my songs. So David, one of the barriers that I had just mentioned previously, which is language, and that is a, such a big barrier for all Vietnamese artists. So in your own opinion, how would you, what would you do in order to overcome those things? I'd say it would be hard, harder for a Vietnamese artist, say in Australia, um, because English is the predominant language and I had no troubles in Germany, for example, because English is widely spoken and, in fact, multiple languages are, but 
countries like Australia where only predominantly English is spoken and countries like Vietnam where predominantly Vietnamese is spoken, that, that can be a, a small sticking issue. What are the platforms that you use in order to expose your music and to reach the audience that you want? Uh, at the moment, I mean, I'm getting a lot of audience online through my Facebook page, uh, Reverb Nation page, because having the album out has enabled me to sort of hit a lot of places that I couldn't hit previously. Um, like here, for example, it was very, I, I got in touch with the Karma Vietnam Network, and they told me to get in touch with Hanoi Social Club. They said that you should, you'd be a good match. So again, it's just my whole creed is just work ethic, you know. Because I'm a musician full time, people think I have a pretty easy life. I would say I play 20% of the time, 80% of the time is admin and just keeping the work coming in and pursuing um, angles with my own music, trying to reach audiences that are gonna, which is why I'm playing here, you know. So it's it, you've got to have a really good work ethic. Yeah. I think it's not. So it looks easy on the outside, and and that's part of what it, the magic, you know. I guess you make it look easier than it is, but it's a lot of hard work. So David, after the show in Vietnam, do you have any further plan um, in touring in Asia? Well, not at the moment because I'm going home in five or six days. But I know, you know, for example, I made a good impression in Indonesia a few days ago. So I've got I've got an offer to play more gigs there if things go well tonight. So it's just slowly building, you know. Like so, maybe in a year or two, I'll have touring opportunities. I can line up. 10 or 12 venues around Southeast Asia and just come and play and travel and take holiday but work. That's how I do it. Thank you, David, for all of your sharing today and I hope that you have a good time touring in Vietnam and all of your sharing today will become such valuable advices for our Vietnamese artists. I have no problem. Thanks for having me. And that's the end of Sharing Vietnam today. Thank you so much for watching us and I hope that you had a good picture in how an artist reach out into international audience. And for the last minute, please be back for the show of David Christopher in Hanoi Social Club. Any questions and concern, please email at sharingvietnam at vtc.vn. Thank you and see you again. You're a lifetime in each moment. You're a playwright.